Hello everyone, this is Mary Gregory with Mass Coding Solution. Welcome to our video today. I hope everyone is doing well. We're having some beautiful fall weather here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I hope the weather is beautiful wherever you are. Uh, if you are in the tax, excuse me, in Texas or Florida, uh, even Puerto Rico, I want you to know we're thinking about you. We're praying for you. Uh, we are giving. It's, um, we are also giving uh, to help uh, in those areas. Uh, if some of you all don't know, those are some of the areas that was recently hit very heavily by some hurricanes and suffered some pretty devastating destruction. So our hearts go out to you. Um, I think that if you are living in those areas and you're going to work, you're probably doing some exciting coding by now. You're probably coding some things you would never code because there are only certain things that happen in hurricanes. Um, so we got a lot of new external calls codes uh, that you will be able to capture that information. So happy coding to you. Um, I'm going to miss not being able to uh, do some of that exciting coding, uh, some of the injuries. Uh, of course, my heart go out to people that may have been injured, so you may have minor injuries, you may see moderate injuries, you may see some severe, devastating injuries. Um, so uh, it's going to be some exciting coding for you uh, at this time, and also in the procedural world as well. You'll probably code some procedures that um, you, you haven't coded in the past and you may never code again. So uh, take that as a learning tool and um, I'm just excited to be with you all today. Today we're going to kick off probably a six part series. Now uh, the way I do my videos uh, it may not be a straight six part series. If we get comments, um, people asking for different things. We try to respond to that. So there may be some additional type um, education in between those six parts. But whenever I do a part, I would say it's a part. And this is called using or learning to use critical thinking skill in PCS coding to prepare you for the CCS. I always like to think of it like this. It's great having your credential, no doubt about it. But that credential should be representing your knowledge and your ability. Therefore, I never want to just teach you how to pass a test. I want to teach you how to code. I want to teach you how to uh, let coding become alive to you. Okay? Big difference. Anybody can learn to pass a test, but it's more important that once you pass that test, when you go get your job, they can trust you. They can trust the information that you're coding. So today, we're going to be talking about developing those critical uh, thinking skills when you are preparing for the CCS um, with PCS and also just this is something you want to use in your everyday coding world, okay? Now, let's just cover a few basics. Of course, this is part one. Now, today what we're going to do is we're going to be focusing in on what they call root operation that take out some of a body part or it can remove the entire body part, okay? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I want to go some ground rule. Number one. You need to have a good understanding of anatomy and physiology. Now that doesn't mean you're going to remember every detail. You got to, hey, you got to learn how to use your, your search engine. Be it Google, be it Bing, be it Safari, whatever. So, because there, there, there are certain things you should know about your body. Like you should know the, uh, the femur is in the upper thigh. That's your femur bone. You should know that in, uh, in that upper area, the femur bone connects to uh, the hip socket, uh, the acetabulum, uh, the neck of the femur. You, you have to know those type things. But I can't remember every bone that's in the foot, uh, that's in your fingers. 
See, they got a lot of little bones. There's so many bones in your in your feet. That's amazing. Um, so I can't always remember that. I may. I know we have a heart. I know what the heart does. I know what the function is. But I'm not going to remember everything about it. Therefore, I'm a great Googler. I have no problem with saying that. Then the next thing you have to know is you got to be familiar with the PCS guidelines. Now, you're not going to remember every guideline, but there are some you have to remember. Every book now that you get have your PCS guidelines in the front. It's up to you as a coder. When you're concerned, you, you, you got your internal, uh, I like to call it a CPU unit, that computer processing unit up here, better known as the brain. When it starts telling you, and then this hard in here, you get that sixth sense of coding. You say, eh, I'm something not right about this. Go to the guidelines. Read the guidelines. And always read the definition of whatever root operation you want to choose. Okay? The next thing you want to do is, and when you come across, uh, when you are faced with a procedure that you are not very familiar with or that you haven't coded, then research it. Always research it, okay? When you're taking the CCS, and this is, this will go if you ever take the CPC, know your book. Now, the CCS is an online test. You'll go to a testing center, you're going to sit at a computer, and you're going to take that test online. The CPC test is a paper-based test. But it doesn't matter which one you're doing, you have to know your book. You need to know where to find things at in your book. I won't go through the anatomy of your book today uh, with PCS, but everything you uh, PCS got a... Um, Appendices that give you body parts that correspond with the body part that you may see on the table. Uh, they have a device uh, appendices for you, so that if some if the doctor say he used X Y Z uh, stent, that X Y Z stent may be listed for you in the back of your book, and it'll tell you if it's a drug eluded, non drug eluded stent, whatever the case may be. Okay, so those were just some a little bit of a guidelines. Um, and I'm going, I got a question here, you know, we try to do an FAQ at the end, so I'm going to try to leave enough uh, time for that. So, today we're talking about root operations, we're talking about PCS, Procedural Coding System. And the PCS coding system is used to record inpatient procedures. PCS is not to be used to record outpatient procedures. Now, let's, let me explain something. If you work in a facility, and that facility have an outpatient surgery department, they may choose to have the coder to code the PCS code and the CPT code. Because in the outpatient coding world, you have to submit procedural codes with CPT codes. Uh, that's just the way it is. But some facilities like to also collect these PCS codes on the uh, outpatient surgeries. Now, of course, I can't go into all the details, but uh, sometimes uh, insurance company may want PCS code on the outpatient. Um, and so sometimes we have to give it to them. But usually your PCS code is scrubbed off the claim before it go out the door. Because remember, everything has to be HIPAA compliant. And um, according to HIPAA compliant, uh, PCS codes are not to go out the door on a bill uh, with outpatient procedures. So today we're going to be talking about the root operation that take out of all or some of a body part. Under that group, <clears throat> excuse me, under that group of root operations, you have excision, you're going to have resection, you're going to have detachment, <clears throat> and you're going to have extraction. Let's look at the definition. Now, <clears throat> your physician may have a different definition, okay? But these are PCS definition. So an excision and PCS coding means this. You are cutting off 
without replacement. If you cut off a body part and you replace it, you cannot be an excision. Excision is strictly used to say I am removing a part of that body part. Now sometimes we can get confused with that because uh, let's say your patient have a abnormal growth on the skin. Well, that abnormal growth may have to be cut off. So you're not cutting off all the skin, you're just cutting off that piece where they have that abnormal growth. So that would be an excision. When a patient have a colonoscopy and they have a polyp on the sigmoid colon and they remove the polyp, that's an excision. Because they didn't remove the entire sigmoid colon. Now, you, uh, then sometimes we have what we call a resection. The resection is when the physician removes the entire part. Now, there are some things we can't remove the entire part unless we replace it. See? So if someone had a hip replacement, uh, once again, you're going to remove that bone, the diseased bone. You're going to take that out, and you're going to replace it with this artificial device. In that case, once again, you can't use resection because you're replacing something. An excision or resection means you cut it off and you did not replace it. That's key, people. So the resection means you took it the whole thing. Some things they don't cut off partially. If you have a gallbladder resection, there's a code for partial, but it's rare somebody get partial, their gallbladder partially removed. So anytime you have a cholecystectomy, removal of a gallbladder, you have done a resection. The next uh, root operation that take out or cut off is called detachment. Now, I don't understand why they had to give us fancy words in PCS. Your physician will never document, I detected, I detached the left leg. No, the physician is going to document, he amputated the left leg. That becomes an amputation. All amputations are coded to detachment, period. So detachment could be easy, but of course, you know, they have to make things complicated. After all, this is America. We have to make it complicated. So, you can detach. Uh, you have your amputation codes. If you ask, and remember this too, amputation codes are always coded in the anatomical section. So, in your PCS book, I think it starts with um, 0x, uh, 0y, and um, yeah, zero x, uh, yeah, zero w, zero x, and zero y. Those are anatomical sites uh, that sometimes you have a procedure, and it's kind of one of those procedures where, uh, like a detachment, multiple body layers is cut through and down to. Uh, we use detachment, but just remember, your physician going to say amputation. You can have a partial amputation of a finger or toe, or you can have the complete amputation of a finger and a toe. You can have your leg amputation can be above the knee or below the knee. I don't see it very often, but they can amputate somebody a uh, foot off at the ankle. They can amputate a foot. But the, the root operation in PCS is detachment. The next root operation that take off or remove some of a body part. So remember, any root operation that take out, take off, and does not replace it, you may be dealing with one of these root operations. Extraction. Uh, extraction means pulling out or off without replacement. And, and, and one of the key things that you have to think about extraction is how is the procedure performed? What do you mean by that, Mary? Hmm. 
So when you have a, a when a female has a dilatation and curatage, better known as the DSC, they have a little device that they go in and they scrape uh, the curatage. It's a form of knife and they scrape it. That's an extraction, see. And laser remover is an extraction. So they may use a laser to remove something. That's an extraction. I always like to think of it like this. If they literally using some type of knife or some type of scalpel or some type of scissors to cut something off, more than likely I'm going to be in an excision and or a resection root operation. Say. And when you're taking the CCS, you have got to think critically. When you are in this real world of coding, coding is changing people. When I got into coding, it was very, uh, it was a little bit easier to get into. And I, it was something I didn't know, but I, I loved coding. Today, they are looking for a different type of personality to get into coding. Today, in the coding world, I do more uh, explaining of coding to my superiors. I have to work with other organizations within the department uh, to explain what coding is. And so you have to do that too. That is why I am really always trying to encourage you to learn more, to think outside that box. Because what happened is, in this real world of coding, my physician may call something an excision, but they, that procedure meets the root operation of a resection. But I'm not going to go to the physician and say, oh, you have to change your terminology. We don't do that. You as a coder have to know when that operative report meets the definition for one of these root operations. You have to know that. See? Now there are always going to be times when things are new on the horizon or we may be new to coding and we may have to query our physician and ask them um, you know, to explain to us exactly what the procedure is designed to do. That's the one thing about PCS coding that even I struggle with from time to time. I have to think, what is this procedure really designed to do? What is it trying to accomplish? See? And that's what you're going to have to do. Your excision and resection will become very easy to you once you, get, once you start doing a lot of coding. That will become easy. Um, for example, you may have a, um, a report where the physician said he did a wedge resection of the lung. Now he used the term resection. Wedge just as simply mean, you know, sometimes you go in the kitchen, you may get your little wedge of cheese. It's a certain cut that they make in the lung to get, uh, if it's cancer, maybe a mass, it may be an abscess on that uh, lung, whatever the case may be. So they make this wedge to get this piece out. Now notice they don't call it an excision. A lot of times uh, that pulmonologist or that thoracic surgeon, most of the time this is done by a thoracic surgeon, will say he did a wedge resection. Well see the root operation for resection says you have to remove that entire body part, like maybe the entire lobe of that lung. They didn't do that. They just went in and cut a piece out. Therefore, I'm going to code that as an excision. I'm not going to code it as a resection. And I don't have to go ask the physician permission. I don't have to talk to them about it. That is the guideline. Now, if he said he did a left lower lobectomy, and see sometimes they'll say that, they'll say excision of the left lower lobe. Now, the the uh, surgeon is using the terminology excision. But based on the definition of the root operation resection or excision, 
Because excision means you just cut a piece off. So, uh, but uh, resection means you remove the entire thing. So I'm going to code it to a resection. Well, I think my time is about to end. Now, I did have a question from a young lady about coding coronary artery bypass. I won't be able to go into it today, but I'm going to do, um, um, the next one we do probably will try to either um, talk about that in greater detail and also talk maybe once again about, begin to uh, talk some more about uh, some coding concepts, some things that are being missed on the CPC. So we will decide which way to go. But just kind of remember this young lady with coding coronary artery bypass. I may go over a little bit. Always look at your physician notes. Okay, if the physician said he did three coronary arteries, three, he will he or she would tell you how did they bypass that bad part in the heart. If you look at your qualifier and bypass, the qualifier means that that heart has to have a new supply of blood coming to it. So the qualifier will tell you or tell the physician or tell whoever looking at the data where is the new blood supply coming from. So when my physician said he did three coronary arteries, I have to know how did he get the new blood into that piece that need that, that blood. So they always have to use what uh, PCS would call a device. Now. We know a lot of times they may go take an artery out of the leg, excuse me, a vein out of the leg. Sometimes they'll take an artery from the stomach, and sometimes they'll take the artery that's in what they call that thoracic mammary artery. Okay, so you're going to have to know that. So if he tells you he did two veins and one artery, that has to be three. See? And so since he did two veins, Okay, and let's say he uh, took the veins, he attached it to uh, that coronary artery uh, bypassing that bi bad spot that the patient has, and he's going to hook it to the aorta. So he takes two, right? So I'm going to come over here to zero two, and I did two arteries, so I'm going to have to have a, a one. So zero two one is my bypass. That Those three body parts. Uh, uh, characters, I like to say. I better say characters. Those three characters. Zero means I'm in the coronary system. Two um, means um, I'm in. Um, hmm, let me think about it. Zero is my um, root operation. Zero is the medical surgical section I'm in. Two is my body system that I'm in. And one is the root operation. I'm in a bypass. So anytime you see one in that third position, and PCS is going to mean bypass. So zero two one. Then I'm going to have a one again because that represents two arteries. And you might say, "Well, Mary, why why are you doing that?" Uh, because if they use the same device to bypass uh, those arteries, you only get to code it once. So if he used uh, veins to bypass two of those arteries, I only need to code it once because, see, I'm going to have a 0, 2, 1, and a 1. It's always going to be open for right now. And you look at your device. I got a vein, right? They got it out of the patient's lower leg, arm, wherever it may be. My device is going to be a 9. And where did, they get, where, did they, where did they hook this to to get the new blood supply? It's in the A order. So that's going to be a W. So my code is going to be 0, 2, 1, and a 1, 0, 9, and a W. But now that's going to take care of 2. Didn't he have another one? We said that he, he used an artery for it. So now that artery is a different device from vein. Therefore, I'm going to have to get an artery code. So I'm going to go to 0, 2, 1. Now he only bypassed one artery with that arterial uh, device that he used. So that's going to be 0, 2, 1, 0 for one artery, 0 again for open. I did an artery, and just let's say they got it from the stomach or something. 
I'm going to have an A for autogonous. Always mean, autogonous always mean it come from the patient themselves. And once again, maybe they took that artery to the aorta, so that would be a W. So my first code could be, or even the first, either one, doesn't matter what position you put these in. So you got 0, 2, 1, uh, 1 for two uh, arteries, 0, and then I, I bypassed it with vein tissue. So my vein tissues was a 9, and my W for A order. For the artery, I got 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, and my artery tissue uh, is uh, A and a W. I kind of went a little fast. But always don't don't make it complicated. And don't, you know, a lot of times we want to read those op notes, and you may have a bypass surgeon. That surgeon may have five pages. Those are all the details that they need to put in there so that that surgeon can prove that that chart ever came to some type of legal conclusion or they need it for research. They can see exactly what was done. But that doesn't mean you code all that. See? So, I got to go. We'll talk about that some more. I do want to uh, encourage you all to follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I, I can't get into Instagram right now, okay? Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I just, I had so much fun today. And I hope you had a lot of fun, and I hope you had a, uh, you know, a great, like we like to say, a great learning experience. Uh, look forward to talking to you in the future, and uh, so long, mm, so long, bye-bye.